On Vive News, the terrible human cost of violent crime. Also, the Syrian tragedy worsens. Welcome to Five News, I'm Catherine Nash. We will never stand by while acid is thrown or knives wielded. Those were the words of the Home Secretary today as the government launched a major crackdown on violent crime. Ministers have come under increasing pressure to act following a spate of killings and knife attacks in London last week. But the problem is nationwide and is getting worse. And Arad, however, denies there is any link between a rise in crime and a fall in police numbers, is our political editor, Andy Bell. Well, Andy joins us now. Andy, no matter how many times ministers deny policing cuts causes more crime, it's very difficult for many people to escape that conclusion. Thank you very much. And we'll have more on that story and how the effects of violent crime can ruin the lives of both victims and perpetrators later in the programme. A man has been shot dead by police in East London. Now, the Prime Minister has condemned a suspected chemical attack in Syria as horrific and appalling. More than 40 people are believed to have died on Saturday in Douma in rebel-held eastern Ghouta on the outskirts of Damascus. And in the early hours of this morning, a missile strike on an airbase near Homs killed more than a dozen people, although no one has claimed responsibility. A warning, Dominic Reynolds' report contains images you may find distressing from the start. Now, for any woman who miscarries, the loss is devastating. And for some women, the current law can make that experience even more painful. At the moment, if a pregnancy ends before 24 weeks, the baby isn't given a death certificate. But now, a national review could change this. Minnie Stevenson has been speaking to one woman in Loughborough who says it's time it did. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back. Now, earlier in the programme, we brought you details of the government's new strategy against rising violent crime numbers. But for every statistic, there's a family behind it that have suffered. Well, one former gang member has told Five News that those involved aren't thinking of the consequences, but they are aware of social media, which can glamorise violence. And it's hard to comprehend for those who have lost someone close to them because of it. Our chief correspondent, Tessa Chapman, reports. Now, for 70 families in the former mining village of Alton near Leeds, the homes are not just affordable, they're also historic. Built by the Coal Board in the 1950s, the so-called prefab houses were made from prefabricated concrete and scrap metal to help the country get back on its feet after World War II. But now they're in danger of being demolished, although residents say they won't be moving out without a fight. Catherine Jacob reports. And we've got a full list of charities on our Facebook page, as well as footage of Prince Charles' special blessing. Now, that visit was part of a pack scheduled for Prince Charles in Australia, and his return to England is set to be a busy one, too, with the birth of his third grandchild. Well, today it was revealed that the Duchess of Cambridge will give birth at the Lindo Wing in central London, where Prince George and Princess Charlotte were also born. But what other details do we know? Our royal correspondent, Simon Vigar, has the latest. Well, that's almost it. But on Five News tonight at 6.30, I'll be speaking to one of the charities that Harry and Meghan have asked for people to donate to instead of giving wedding presents. Plus, as the Home Secretary announces a crackdown on violent crime, also, would you be happy swapping beef and lamb for goat? Well, that's all coming up in just over an hour. Next, though, it's Alex Deacon with the weather. I'll see you again at 6.30, but thank you for watching. Goodbye.